That doesn't mean I always make sense in the things I say. Because I can be an idiot. And I can think I'm making sense. I mean, I'm making sense to me. But that's as far as it's going, this far. So what I hope you will do is that if I start, if I say something that you know, doesn't make sense, or you have a question about, you'll do one of the, you'll you'll ask me about it. You'll say, David, what, what was that? You know, could you explain that in a better way? Okay, I would appreciate that. Because my only reason for being here is for you and I to end up with some kind of shared understanding and shared experience. I'm not here just to hear me talk. Although I do like to hear me talk. It's true. That's a warning for you all. I can talk. <laughs> that means you have to stop. Right? I'm going to try and stop myself, but it's not that easy. So, where to start? Well, I've been teaching modeling for... Uh, you know, yeah, that, that's... What that sounds like in Polish? Yes, exactly. Uh, for maybe, I don't know, 30 years? Is that right? Maybe even a little longer than that. And over those years, I have um, said a lot of stupid things about them. And I taught people some, I think, inappropriate things about I hope that, you know, as the years have gone by, I've figured things out and I'm smarter about it. But as I do kind of go through the world of NLP teaching, I find that there's a lot of ways that people have of thinking about modeling and thinking about NLP that I don't agree with. That I think get in the way of actually doing modeling and being competent at NLP. And I'm partially responsible for those. So, I'm going to try and correct some of that tonight. And I think to do that, I have to take you back a little, just for a little bit, to kind of the beginning of NLP. Now, me, I was in, I was in um, college, cutting up lots of animals. Some of them were live animals. It got kind of icky. Yeah. So I stopped doing it. But then I didn't know what to do. You know, I was going to have a career of cutting up animals. And then I didn't like it anymore. So I was wondering, well, what am I going to do now? And I walked into a bank. And I stood behind this guy in line. And he was a skinny guy like me. Exactly, just like Dokładnie. my size exactly. Tak, Except he had a beard. Oprócz, dobrze miał brody jeszcze. And we started talking. I and he said uh, he, was, he was teaching um, gestalt there. In these private groups at night. Sounded very mysterious. Very rebellious. I uh, so I was attracted. I and he, he invited me to join him. So I did, and it was Richard Bandler. Have you all heard of Richard Bandler? Yeah, okay. This was in the old days. Like he was actually my size. <laughs> if you've seen pictures of him now, he's like, you know. But in the early days of NLB, he and I wore the same clothes. 
now you know how long ago that was. And so I went and I was just stunned, you know, here was this guy doing gestalt therapy and doing all these amazing things with people and I thought, I'm going to learn that. So I did, I stayed and worked with him. Meanwhile, John Grinder was in another one of his groups. And there came a point, I'm not going to go through all the details. And John and Richard got together and started uh, putting Richard's ability to work in terms of systems and to understand therapy and John's ability with linguistics. And together they figured out that they could use their talents to figure out how Fritz Perl really did what he did, how he got his wonderful results. And then they put their talents together to figure out how Virginia Satir And they started teaching the rest of us. Now, we didn't call that modeling. But that is, of course, what, what they were doing. What they were doing. And I'm about to tell you what modeling is. Modeling is looking for patterns of behavior and patterns of thinking and then describing those patterns in a way that somebody else can use them. That's what modeling is. So if you want to do modeling, all you need to do, um, this makes it sound easy, all you need to do is identify them. <laughs> All you need to do is identify what is, is to see patterns in what somebody is doing. And then find a way to describe those patterns so that they can work for somebody else. And that's what model is. And that's what we started doing. Every, you know, every sometimes twice a week, at least once a week. Richard and John, and then the group of acolytes around them, including me. You know, it was Judith Delosier, Robert Diltz, Leslie Cameron Bandler. The names might you know. I think that's probably it from those from that, the early days. And what we did was every week we bring in people that we met or knew who did something strange or had some problem. We bring them in and Richard would do things like okay, take this so if somebody had a uh, they couldn't get over a, the death of their father. And the father had been dead for 20 years. Okay, take, take this person into that room and go find the patterns of how this person is thinking in order to hold on to their feelings for their father. That's modeling. And then once we understood the patterns, then he'd say, okay, now go fix them. <laughs> 
which meant change the pattern. Which we then had to do. Because Richard told us we had to do it. Have any of you ever seen Richard on like a videotape or anything like that? Richard, you don't say Richard, no, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't say that to Richard. He says, go fix them, and you better not come out of the room until they're fixed. <laughs> so we did, which was great. If you think about it, it was such a great thing, you know, in our learning. Because we couldn't go, oh, I don't feel like it, oh, this is too hard. Because then we have to come out and tell Richard, no, oh, I pushed you. <laughs> you didn't want to do that. So, we would do it. We learned a lot. We also brought in people who could do wonderful things. Once there was a woman who, brought, who came in, who she said, well, I, yeah, I make mistakes. I have uh, problems in my childhood. But if I discover a problem in my childhood, I just change it. So it doesn't bother me anymore. Doesn't that sound like a good thing to know? Here's somebody. How many of us have problems from our childhood? No? <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, this woman, she has problems just like everybody else. Then she just changes it so they're not a problem anymore. So, we started pulling out her patterns, taking examples, finding out. How does she do that? And then we tried it with ourselves. And it worked. And then we turned it into a technique. You guys know what technique that is? Some of you? Have you heard of the change history? An NLT change history? Do some of you know about that technique? Change history? Okay. That wasn't like pulled out of the thin air. That was pulled out of this book. She figured out how to do it. So we said, okay, teach us. <laughs> and that's what, that's what she did. We pulled out the patterns, turned it into a technique, and then that became part of the NLP training for us. Now, what happened was, is that we pulled out a lot of these patterns and they became, turned, turned into good techniques which were then became the NLP training which is terrific. But <laughs> that's what NLP became was all those techniques. And that's not what it was in the beginning. Now, for years, I didn't kind of, I didn't kind of realize that, that that's what it happened. But after years of doing the trainings, and I'm very responsible for this, you may, because in the early days, Richard, John, Leslie, myself, Robert, created the first training institute in Santa Cruz. Robert was the director of research. I was the director of training. And Leslie and I, in particular, created the practitioner and master practitioner training. I know, it's my, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> May <it> culture. <laughs> <me. laughs> and now you know they're alive all over the world. 
So they're great because they put into people's hands so many wonderful tools for understanding their own experience, other people's experience. For being able to help other people, help themselves change. Great. But that's not what attracted me to him. For me, what it was about was the exploration of experience. What's going on inside of people? How do they do the things that they do? And to me, everything that people did was wonderful. Even their problems are wonderful. Think about somebody who's still grieving over their father after 20 years. Wow. That's amazing. How do you do that? Well, you don't know. I mean, start to think about it. Could it be useful to know about that? How could it be useful to know about that? That's a real question. I shall wait for an answer. Because then we know not to do what not to do. Okay, absolutely. Yep. What else? So you stay at least on the to that How to Exactly. See, everything that some that is a problem that somebody has in another context could be very useful, not a problem at all, but something wonderful. Suppose there's some context in which you want to hold on to your feelings through time. Well, this person who's been grieving for 20 years knows how to do it. And maybe if we found out how she does that, the structure, we could use that to hold on to any feelings over a long period. So, to me, one of the one of the main things I would like to um, suggest to you is that all the things that people do are just the things that people do. They're not inherently problems. Or the opposite problem. Gifts? Did you say gifts? Good word, gifts. They're not terribly problems or gifts. Exactly. That it depends on the context in which they're used, it depends on how they're used. And to me, what makes that a powerful notion is that it means whatever people are doing, it could be worth understanding the structure because it could be useful somewhere else. Now, that, that idea that I just gave you. Just what we just kind of missed that in 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 the early days of NLP. And so it wasn't that we didn't do it; we just didn't convey it. And so we didn't do it; we just didn't convey it. And so what happened? It's just that is my belief that we didn't do it; we just didn't convey it. And so what happened? It's just that is my belief that we didn't do it; we just didn't convey it. And so what happened? 
learning how to do the wonderful things that wonderful people did. Przyłączono czy powiązano wieku z tym, co wspaniali ludzie robią, jakie wspaniałe rzeczy robią. You know, I'm going to do seminars and modeling. Seminarium z modelowaniem. And ask people, what do you want to model? I pytam, co chciałbyś zmodelować? And every time, za każdym razem, things like, uh, I want to model how to modelować jak make a lot of money on the stock market. Jak zarobić dużo pieniędzy na giełdzie? I want to model how to speak to groups and have them do whatever I want them to do. Do group, tak żeby oni robili wszystko co ja chcę, żeby oni robili. I want to model how to make people fall in love with me. Ja chcę spowodować, żeby ludzie się kochali we mnie. I want, you know, all these. I'm not single. What about all the little things that make actually make life worth living? You know, fine rzeczy, które powodują, że fajnie jest żyć, warto jest żyć. So who cares if you got a lot of money? Kogo chodzi, że masz dużo pieniędzy, czy nie? It actually doesn't make you happy. Tak naprawdę nie czyni cię to szczęśliwym. They don't study stuff. I są jest wiele badań, które to wymieniają. So it's true. Więc wiemy, że to jest prawda. Nie ma to znaczenia większego. It doesn't make the quality of people's lives. A przynajmniej nie daje to wysokiej jakości życia. The qualities of our lives are in the little things that go on with us each day. Polega na tych drobnych szczegółach, małych rzeczach. And that's actually what I'm more interested in. Ja interesuję się tym bardziej. See, right now I know in this room are dozens, maybe even hundreds, of wonderful, interesting abilities that probably most everybody in here takes for granted. A bierze po prostu coś gwarantowanego, nawet nie, nie zauważa, że to jest jakaś yeah, umiejętność. Not, not really appreciating. Ani nie docenia tego, że to jest umiejętność. Nobody puts you on the cover of a magazine because of it. Nie doceniasz tego, bo nikt za to cię nie umieścił na opłatce jakiegoś czasopisma. It's just what you do. To zrobisz to na co dzień. So you don't think it's anything special or wonderful. Często nie wydaje się, że to jest coś cudownego, a to być wspaniałego. But for somebody else, it could be. So think for a moment. Let's think. Let's get some ideas. I want you to think for a moment. What's what's something that you love doing? Well, I love doing this. 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 Is figuring out how to build things. To takie rozumienie, jak coś trzeba zbudować. I mean, actually build things. I naprawdę je zbudować. You know, if you say David, jak powiesz David, I want to change this room. I want to build on an addition to the house. Chciałbym taki dodatkowy kawałek tego budynku zbudować. How can I do that? Jak mogę to zrobić? Coś takiego. I can figure out how to do it. To ja potrafię to zapakować, zrozumieć, ułożyć jak to trzeba zrobić. I can plan how to build things and have them be built well. It's not a big deal. Unless you want to plan something. How to build something. Then it could be wonderful. Another thing I'm good at is having people feel comfortable in my home. People love to visit. They love to visit. It's just true. You know, there's ways in which I take people in my home and have them there. So I'm good at that. Nobody's been putting on a magazine cover for this. But it does affect people's quality of life. So I want you to think for a moment. Something you do really well.
got some ideas? So let's hear some of them. Let's hear some, some of the things. Do I have to pick people? Poland, yes. Okay. Thank you for telling me. This is my first time in Poland. So yeah. I don't know. You know, when I'm in Italy, you're like, oh, me, me, me. me. <laughs> Okay. Yes. So what's something you do really well? Uh, I think I'm a good teacher. Okay. I think she's a good teacher. Do we know what that means? No. What would you like to ask him? He says, I think I'm a good teacher. Let's assume for a moment that he is a good teacher. All right? Yes. He's not just being modest. I think I'm a good teacher. Let's say it's true. Right. But we still want to know more. What is it you'd want to know? Exactly. He's a good teacher. That we don't know really what he's talking about. Yeah, it's good. You know, what does he, he mean? Well, I could good, make good diagrams on the, on the board. Or maybe he means that uh, he's good at keeping the class quiet. Or maybe he means that kids... Do you teach children? No. What do you teach? Who do you teach? I think I have such a feeling of teaching. Nie jestem nauczycielem, natomiast myślę, że mam taką naturalną umiejętność dzielenia się wiedzą i sprawia mi to przyjemność. I myślę, i że ludzie są w stanie dobrze mnie zrozumieć. Okay, now we know a lot more about what his ability is, right? So when you're with people, either as an individual or as a group, you have, it seems that people are very, are, have an easy time understanding you. Uh -huh. you make sense to them? Yeah? Okay. So he's good. What's your name? Piotrek. Piotrek? Okay, yeah. So he's good at that. Who in here? Or, no, no, let's put it, ask it differently. I want everyone in here <laughs> to find some situation or context in your life where it would be useful to you to have the ability for other people to easily understand. Find some context or situation. Yeah? yeah. Everybody except for you. <laughs> so this could be, you know, what he can do could be a great use And it's sitting right there. Somebody else. Oh, I have to pick, right? Yeah. Okay. Ja mam umiejętność planowania podróży, znajdowania informacji, wyszukiwania miejsc, które można zwiedzić. Później takiego podróżowania, żeby było ono ciekawe, żeby mieć takie inne ścieżki, a później opowiadania opowiadania. To help tell people how the traveling was, mm -hmm. to convey that. Oh, okay. Now, so people travel, okay. and um, uh, you know me, I just show up. I don't really do any plan. <laughs> and so God knows what I end up seeing or doing. So when we travel, it could be useful to be able to do what she does. So then let's open up the context. When, when or how could she use her ability? 
Kiedy i jak moglibyście wykorzystać użycie i umiejętność? To plan travel. Aby zaplanować podróż. And then what I consider to be a separate ability. A potem ja uważam, że to jest jeszcze inna umiejętność dodatkowa. Do you agree? Yeah. Huh? It's two ability. The ability then to share the experiences of your travels with somebody else. When might that be useful? <coughs> Other than travel. Traveling you can use a trip as a metaphor of life. Okay, I totally agree with that. So what, what context or situation might you use that ability that involves, um, you know, traveling through life? Maybe in your personal life or your work, your career? All right, maybe if you were working with somebody, say, say you're a career counselor. Helping, you know, helping uh, plan a journey for yourself or for somebody else. You know, that ability might exactly map over to that different context. I agree, completely. Absolutely. Yeah. Any other ideas about when or how you can use it? Yes. She wants to share her ability. I'll get to you in just a second. Mm -hmm. See if anybody else has any other ideas of how you might use Czy her ability. I completely, that, I think that's an excellent use of that. And have them really not just hear about it, but kind of go on the journey with you. That's what I got from you is that you can really share your journey. You bet. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. Now. So what's your ability? To create a comfortable, useful, structure from nothing, from zero. From everything. Wow. Okay. So give us an okay. No. So give us an example of doing that. Some recent example. For example, I'm in the Polish mountains and I'm in the Polish <laughs> mountain house and there are three wet children with wet shoes. I create a construction to dry everything, to dry and shoes. Uh -huh. And this is an example of you doing what? Pragmatic, useful constructions. Okay. To survive. <laughs> okay. So this is this is only something you use in survival situations. Or when I want to have more comfort. I'd like an example of that as well. I'm in the woods. And there is no light there. There's no light where I need, or lamp where I need, so I'm, I'm going to create it the way that the light or lamp is exactly where I need it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm digging in the walls, <laughs> and I'm asking, 
Okay, I like that question. But that question is pushing her. Let's find out how far this ability goes. So in this example you were talking about with the light. I assume you looked around and you went, oh, I don't want the light there, so I want it here. And you just moved it. Or you move the bed. Okay. That's good. That's even better. You move a bed. All right. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so. Um, I have a piece of so I just something was wrong, and then I'm. So it's closed. Hmm? So it's closed. <laughs> 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 I see. I see. So, all right. Good. And this actually happened. <laughs> Put up a rope? Yeah, and the lamp and hanging it somewhere else. Okay. Or pulling it somewhere. Now. I would be afraid to invite you to my home. Why? 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 I'm afraid of the attractions. Now. I'm going to destroy the living. Now. First of all, that way I gets into. I don't want to turn. It, I can't turn this into a whole seminar. That's a that's a appropriate concern. But if there's something about your in your house or a room that's uncomfortable, for you, and you do want to invite them and say, "Can you take care of this for me? Fix this." Yeah. So. Would it be interesting to know how she does that? I mean, think about it. Certainly in our physical world, there are times when, um, well, I've been in so many hotel rooms, you know, where the light was bad. Especially for reading, you know, in bed. You see, they put the little crummy lights there, and you're exactly you're having the. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's terrible. I mean, what are they thinking? <laughs> right. So, but it never occurred to me to move the bed. <laughs> so now, well, let's find out. So. I mean, I, I think there's certainly, um, there are those uh, physical situations that all of us have had. At home, in the car, on, in mountain cabins, wherever. Where things aren't set up to our comfort and satisfaction. And she, what's your name? Monica. Monica. And Monica. Huh? Monica. Monica? Yeah, Monica. 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 She figures out how she can rearrange things so that she's comfortable the way she wants it. Like with Monica. Exactly. It wasn't comfortable. That's that's exactly right. Oh God, that's so. The point. So the point that she was just making is that. This ability that she has, she probably is using it not just in the context of her hotel. It's probably something that is fairly pervasive through her 
experience your life. All kinds of contexts. So, do you know how many times I mispronounce people's names? You know how many times people correct me? Almost never. Not just in terms of our physical world, but maybe in terms of our relationships, or how our, what's going on in our internal world, experiential rooms inside. So, it could be interesting. So let's find out a few things about what she's doing. Pierwsze pytanie jest w ogóle, czego my się mamy dowiedzieć? Co z sobą mamy szukać? Jakie pytania zadać? Now, uh, different people who teach modeling have different answers for that. modelowania ma różne pytania. There is no correct set of Nie ma jakiegoś jedynego, właściwego zestawu pytań. Different questions take you to different kinds of information. Um, now, of course, I have my own questions that I think are worth asking. Uh, pieces of information I think are worth getting. I'm not going to bore you with those things. Although, they're the best, of course. <laughs> you know, down, down the line, if in the future, if I come back and I teach modeling, we'll go into that detail. But for right now, let's ask some very simple, straightforward questions. For instance, um, <laughs> when, so let's take you back to um, uh, uh, being in that cabin, or that. Wróć do tego miejsca, gdzie jesteś w tym pokoju. No. Nie, do pokoju nie. Is that not a good example? Nie, dobrze, dobrze. What's a good example? I had a lot of mushrooms and I had to try them at home. <laughs> All right. No dryer. And no dryer. No mushroom dryer. Okay. No mushroom dryer. All right. So there you are with all these mushrooms. No mushroom dryer. So let me ask you first of all. Did you actually start hitting yourself on the head? Oh, 
What form we pick up so many emotions? Okay, so you start with <laughs> anguish over collecting all these emotions. <laughs> so then you ask a question. Did you in fact start at asking yourself, why did we get all these? Oh, okay, all right. So you're just having fun with me. Okay, <laughs> all right. So I, I do want to ask you a question. A teraz naprawdę, czy change, change the atmosphere. Okay, so zmieniło to atmosferę. My suggestion is Moje pytanie jest takie. that you answer me. Is, is it better for you if she answers in czy Polish? Czy lepiej jest, żeby odpowiada po polsku? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You should, you, you yeah. tell me. Okay. So there you are with all these mushrooms. Okay, jesteś z tymi grzybami. You need to draw him. Potrzebuję, żeby to zrobić. What are you thinking so much as you're trying to figure out what to do? <coughs> how fast I want to do that? And how much? How many of them? How many of them I have to do? I have to do that. Okay, how many I have to dry? How to dry? To dry? How quickly? And how much? How dry do I want them to be? See? That's the first thing he said. No, she didn't. I thought you said how how dry do I want? No, how quick? Oh, I'm being part. Good. Okay. I mean, do I have to dry? How quickly? And when? Uh, where? Where can I do that? And where? Good. <laughs> where so my husband is not annoyed with the smell of it. Because then he doesn't sleep. Husband not annoyed. Okay? Good. What's another example of your using this ability to make things? In my room, in my house, to set up one room with four grandchildren coming. Oh, one room, four grandchildren. All right. Four kids. All right. set it up. Okay, so what were you thinking? So go back to that time. What are you thinking there? What I have available. And how I wanted to How I want a space to look like so we can walk and live and do things. And children can have access to daily stuff. So how can we walk and how they can what do I have available? Um, ha I'm, I'm sorry, how to have space? So we can walk and children can have an access to their stuff. Space to walk. Children have access to their stuff. <laughs> and my husband to survive them. Always the husband, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My husband to survive, is that it? Yeah. It. Now. So when she was looking at the room with the kids, 
She wasn't thinking, how many kids do I have to drive? How quickly do I have to drive my kid? And where can I drive the kid? Right? This is different content. But is there a pattern? Is there something the same about this? What would you say she's doing in both cases? Okay, uh, she's protecting her husband, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, husband, that's always fair. Protect the husband. I'll bring to that. <laughs> she's judging situation and evaluating resources. Resources? Well, she does talk about resources here, what I have available here. Where? Somebody said she's doing everything on her own. Mm -hmm. well, that's an interesting question. And that's something we might ask her. That's something we're holding on to. When you are, um, just step out for a moment. So when you are um, figuring out how to make things the way is it something you're always going to take care of on your own? Or will you use other people to help you do it? Most of it I'll do alone. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> sometimes maybe. <laughs> But reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> there will be resistance. So you don't use other people because. <laughs> it's chorus. <laughs> All right. Okay. So she's looking for her resources. What else? She's focusing on a uh, result that she wants. On the result. result. On the result. Say, say a little more about that. What, for example. What do I want here? What do I want? And how is she answering that question? So it's like she's asking this big question. What do I want? Okay. It's as though she's asking that question. But how is she, what's her first step in answering that? So what is she doing when she's asking these things? She sets conditions that should be fulfilled, criteria, conditions. That's it. <laughs> she gets a handshake. <laughs> she's going, okay. Before she's going, oh, what can I do? She's identifying what I would call, and I think somebody else said, the, the criteria. What are the criteria, or if you like, the um, standards that have to be satisfied? You know, so the, she's, she's establishing what what needs to be satisfied or fulfilled in whatever solution I come up with. So she's identifying criteria that is what is important to satisfy or fulfill in this situation. Alright, now. Cool. One thing we know is you've always got to take into account the husband's experience. <laughs> no. It is crazy. How do they have access to their kids have access to their stuff? How do they have space, they have, they have space to walk around? 
uh, you know, where is it possible to have this? It has to be someplace that's possible. How quickly? These are all criteria. I want everybody here to do it. And I'll do it too. Is to think of some area in your life, anything, where things are not the way you'd like them to be. Could become some, uh, something physical environment, relationship, what's going on in your own experience. The first, I just identify one of those areas that is it's a problem for you. You're not comfortable in that, with that. And you haven't known how to make it the way you want it to be. Just identify it. Give me that meaningful look so I know you've got it. Put yourself in that situation and then ask yourself. What is important to satisfy or fulfill in this situation? Identify what's important. Maybe it's one thing, maybe it's ten. Just identify, okay, what are the criteria that have to be fulfilled here? And then notice how it affects your experience. How it affects your thinking. So, how about it? Did, first of all, were you able to do that? Were you able to start identifying what was important, what the criteria were? Did it affect your thinking or your experience? In what ways? How did it affect you to be think, identifying what the criteria I went inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. That affected your experience. That it's measurable. Uh -huh. to measure it. And it's doable because of that. Right. It starts to feel like, oh. Now I can get my arms around it now. It's like, oh, what am I going to do? That I can, I can control directly. That was, that was my experience as well. Aspects. Uh -huh. what, it, what it is about for me. Uh -huh. And so you feel like you're more directed in what you can... Now I know where to go with this. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I know often people, well, speak for myself, often. <coughs> I'm presented with a situation I don't like. And I'll immediately start, I'll jump to, what can I do about this? That's different than saying, okay, what are the, what are the important criteria to satisfy in, what, in how I change the situation? As soon as I do that, I found, I, I just like, I, I settle down. <laughs> and I start to feel more in control of how I'm going to take care of it. Does that make sense to you all? No. Okay. Does that seem useful? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now. Let me get my criteria. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just go. Um, right. Okay. <laughs> now I'll settle down. So the first, um, I, to me, the most essential point uh, that I hope you all got a taste of from what we just did. Is that you just affected your own experience, the structure of your own experience, by taking on for a moment somebody else's structure? I mean, that's just magic. I mean, that's just absolute magic. Um, now, <coughs> of course, we haven't found out everything from her yet. There's much more we can find out about. And maybe we'll ask a, a, another question. So, but even if we didn't find out anything more, if that was the only piece of information we pattern, the only pattern we pulled out. To me, that, that's like gold. That was a, that's a really useful pattern that we just identified. That's something that every one of us could take out of this room and use with ourselves or other people. How many of you work with clients? How many of you interact with other human beings? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, most of you. All right. <laughs> I guarantee something that's going to happen in the next, I don't know, 24 hours. I can guarantee this because I'm not going to see most of you. <laughs> you won't be able to say I'm wrong. But probably in the next 24 hours, you're going to be interacting with somebody who's feeling they're in some situation that they don't like, they want to do something about it, and they're feeling overwhelmed. Oh, I hate this, I don't know what to do, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that. Now, from the little bit of modeling that we did here, you have a pattern, if you like a technique, that you could use to actually uh, intervene on that person's behalf. Wait a minute. Just a What I want you to do is just, have you and I together, let's figure out, identify, What's important in this situation? What's important to satisfy <laughs> However, we decide, however you figure out to solve the problem, that leaves the things that have to be satisfied by that solution. Okay. 
And I assure you that if you do that, the conversation is going to be very different today. Now, you've helped this person, and that person could be you. <laughs> help this person identify, oh, okay. This is what matters. This is what the outcome has to fulfill. Now, what are the things I can do that are directed towards fulfilling those criteria? That's a very different computation. Then, I don't like the way things are. What can I do? You guys kind of get what I'm talking about there. Does that make sense to you? I hope you'll try that. Try to find out what difference it makes in, in that person's experience with Now, um, no, obviously there are hundreds of other questions we can ask. Because we know she does more than just identify her criteria. We could ask her, for instance. Here you are with your mushrooms. Uh, and you, you've looked at how many you've got and, and where you could possibly drive them and how quickly. And you know you need to, however you come up, whatever you come up with has to not annoy your husband. What's the next thing that you did in your thinking? I was trying some constructions in my head, mentally. Okay. So she's trying constructions in her head. Yeah. We could leave it at that. And that would be okay. Is there more you would like to know about that? What would you like to know? Alright, so you want to jump to that. Okay, so we know she's making constructions in her head. One thing to find out is, how does she know when she's come up with a construction that will work, that is, that satisfies her criteria? Yes, that's something I would want to know. I do want to know the results, too. Because we want to make sure that it does have a good result that we But before we get to the result, if I'm going to do what she does, okay, so I'm making constructions. How do I know when I come up with a solution that satisfies the criteria? So yeah, that's something I would, I think we should find out about. Okay. What else might you want to find out? <laughs> what else might one find out? So she said, well, I, I make constructions in my head of, you know, how to solve this problem. So if I tell you all, make constructions in your head, you can do that, right? Sure, you can do it, just some way or another. But you're going to do it the way you do it. Mm -hmm. 
And remember, what, what we want to do, at least for now, is we want to make our experience match hers. We want her structure operating So what do we want to find out from her? What is, I would like to know what is the key, how she is choosing what to construct. Why this and not that? Yeah, so let me rephrase what you said. And you tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. I'm um, that we want to find out from her. How is she making these constructions? What is she actually doing inside of her experience to construct the possible solution? Is that what you were on what base, okay, on what basis does she choose the different things? Yeah, uh, completely. Those are all things I would want to know in order to be making constructions the way she makes constructions. Now, we don't have time to, you know, go into all of that, actually find out, but we might find out that, you know, she, in her head, she makes pictures where she imagines moving things around, and then she tries something and then takes it into the future and sees what happens in the future if she does that, and then examines whether or not that's going to fulfill her criteria. Maybe she does put things together in her head, sees them, and feels what it would feel like to be living with things that way. You know, I don't know. But those are different kinds of experiences. But what we want to do as modelers is to find, whatever it is, we want to find out how she does it. Yeah. And then make that our experience. Find out if it works for us too. And that's it. That's Mala. Yeah. So tomorrow, for instance, I'll give. Okay. You know you're gonna have to shut me up. You know that. But I have a question. Uh, it sounds very familiar to me, the strategy that uh, Monika uses. Because I use it often but in certain contexts. And I would be delighted to widen the context all other contexts of my life. Okay. Probably not, but okay. <laughs> you think that's a good idea. It's probably not. <laughs> well, well, I mean, this gets into a very big issue, the whole issue of contextualization. Um, Yes, it is the case, absolutely the case, 
that there are certain abilities that we apply in particular situations or contexts. Not others. And sometimes that ability would be useful in those other contexts. I've never found an ability that was useful in all contexts. <laughs> Um, but uh, one of the things if you pursue modeling you will want to consider is when do I want to use this ability? That is, in what context is it useful or appropriate? I assure you that this ability as wonderful as it is that there will be contexts in which it's not wonderful, it's a problem. Okay. Maybe if you've got this ability, you could find yourself in situations where you would be better off if you just let things alone and let them as they are. But you can't. You know? Even if you can't do anything about it inside, you don't. <laughs> the ability is still going, but you can't do anything about it. So, contextualization is an important and yes, you can expand. Um, I know it's time. Uh, uh, okay, so so what I hope you get more than anything else is is a sense that every person represents. A world of abilities that every person you meet has wonderful things that they do that could enhance your own experience or experience of other people. That they are resources for the world. And that um, it is possible to describe the patterns that this per that are natural for this person and make those same patterns available to you or other people in order to enhance your own life or the lives of others. To me, that's what modeling is about. It's not about making money. Or getting a date. Um, and I hope someday in the future we'll have a chance to um, go deeply into that world of modeling together. That would be great. We'll do that sometime. Any questions about. So my question is if this is a first step or is or that's it? That's the whole model. Hmm. You know what we just did? What I just described is all there is? So, so well, inside of that little well, description, there's a lot of stuff. Um, you know, there's identifying what to model. There is getting appropriate examples. Finding good exemplars, people who have the ability and can really demonstrate it. There's learning how to ask questions that elicit the information you need. There's learning how to recognize patterns. Very important, there's learning how to use your own body and experience to test the information that you're getting. I'm not finished. <laughs>
Then there, <laughs> then there, then there is taking that information and putting it in a form that makes sense to you and other people. And then there's testing it out. And then after all that, you get to have a good statistic. <laughs> so there's a lot inside of that. There's a lot of skills and abilities to develop if you want to get into it deeply. But as far as I'm concerned, <coughs> anytime you meet somebody who does has an ability or does something that you're curious about, and you ask them, What's going on inside of you when you do that? And as best you can, you take what they tell you and you try it for yourself. You're modeling. Period. All that other stuff are refinements to make it more effective and deeper. Ale pracuję teraz w coachingu z klientem, który byłby świetnym antymodelem. Wszystko to robi, robi tak źle, że tak czasami sobie myślę, że no, ma to oczywiście zasady, ale robi wiele rzeczy. Ja myślę, że to też byłoby dobre modelowanie dla innych. Good to know how he does to the same thing. Um, the, the whole framework for modeling that um, that I use was originally developed. It, it looks like this. <coughs> well, you guys ask me questions, I'm going to answer. <laughs> Very briefly, it looks like this. So this is a format for modeling. That's called the um, uh, experiential array. Experiential mm -hmm. array. <coughs> so this is what I use to do modeling and what I yeah, teach other people. And all this is 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 a way of keeping track of information in a useful form. To jest taki format, który pomaga nadążać za informacjami, czy zbierać je w użyteczny sposób. We use it to collect information about beliefs, strategies, emotions, and external behavior. Przekonać strategii, emocji i zewnętrznych zachowań osoby. And all of these things together are the ability to constitute. To wszystko razem buduje, konstytuuje umiejętność. But when we, we as say, Graham Dawes, my partner and I, my uh, colleague and I, when we first created it, we didn't create it for modeling, we created it for problems. And we used, so we were, you know, teaching therapy. And we Somebody have a problem, we have them identify, identify the patterns of their behavior, patterns of thinking, emotional states, and the beliefs. And the reason we did that was once we had all those patterns, we knew what, where to change, make changes in the system to change the problem. And that's what, and that's how to use this. 
And it wasn't until after we used it for, I think, a year. We went, oh, wait a minute. That's just modeling. We're modeling problems instead of ability. It's exactly the same thing. It's just you're using it differently. Instead of using it, looking for what to change in the system. We're looking how to take the system into ourselves. So that we can have that ability. So model that guy. Find what his patterns are. Then go, okay, now. Where's the key pattern? If I change that, changes everything else. You gotta make that sound. Change it everything. That in Polish. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I identify in me or in another person something that it's repeating, a problem that it's repeating. Someone is losing a job, for example. What are the, how is this person organizing their thoughts, feelings, behavior, so that they naturally end up losing their jobs, losing their job. They have the ability to lose their job. That's their ability. <laughs> so we know whatever they're doing in their experience works perfectly for, for that outcome. And that could be useful for somebody who's staying with a job that they hate. They just can't get, they just can't get out of it. <laughs> okay. I know, but yes, one more. Um, modeling is a great thing, but uh, I have a question about uh, bad using of modeling. For example, um, one, uh, one man um, wants to get some ability from another person, and uh, he thinks that he wants to do it, but uh, in the result it will be uh, not good for him. Maybe he can lose his uh, naturally, or uh, something like that. And uh, when uh, some man wants to model too much, he can uh, become uh, a machine, not a person, for example. That use of modeling. How how would that happen? Become a machine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, chodziło mi o. Okay. Uh, chodziło mi o ktoś chce na przykład, uh, modelować za dużo, um, bierze za dużo rzeczy i wtedy nie staje się, traci swoją naturalność, traci swoją osobowość staje się zupełnie kimś innym i staje się tak, taką maszyną. Mm -hmm. Ok, so how could somebody use modeling to become a machine? Jak to mogłoby się stać, że ktoś... I don't, I don't understand. Jeszcze tego do końca nie znam, że tak modelował, że stałby się jak maszyna. Za dużo modelowało. Hmm? Oh, copy of someone else. Oh, maybe, maybe someone like that, yes. Ok. Let me set your mind at ease about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Good question. That's another one of the myths in the world of modeling. That, you know, if I model, if I model you, do a really good job, I will become you. Not possible. Uh, one of the reasons is, there's many reasons, but one of the main reasons is, <coughs> ability, a person, is not just a structure, it's not just certain beliefs, certain strategies, emotions, and behavior. 
all of this is operating um, <coughs> as one. Let's see how do I draw this. All this, <laughs> all this is operating within. To wszystko sobie operuje, te różne umiejętności, te strukturki. My, my personal history. Operuje na moje osobiste historie. My, my life experiences. Na moich doświadczeniach. Also, my body. So as much as I learn about your experience, it is still the case that I, that in using it, I'm going to feed through that structure David. So if you're very good at making presentations, or let's say you're very good at asking, um, uh, you're very good at asking pointed questions. Right. And I want to be able to do that the way you do. So I do a really thorough job in modeling. And I do a really good job of taking on that structure myself. It will still be the case that I will be expressing or doing David through that structure. It won't be you. It won't be you. It's to me. It's like learning to paint. So here you've got an artist who knows knows how to paint, and you learn from that artist how to make lines and use color and, and how to paint, so that you can do what that person does: use a brush and color and so on in the same way. And then you're given a canvas to paint. And you can do what that artist does. Is your painting going to look like that of your mentor's painting? No, it's not. One of the great experiences, I'll tell you this and then we call it a One of the great experiences of my life was I took a, a, a class in um, uh, abstract painting. Abstractionego malowania uczyłem się. You know, we got our ten <laughs> students all in the <laughs> circle, <laughs> and uh, some object in the middle. <laughs> and the the teacher, she spent time, you know, describing a certain artist technique, <laughs> showing us how to do <laughs> it, <laughs> examples. <laughs> and then we were all then to paint the same object <laughs> in the same <laughs> style as that artist. <laughs> I'm working away, working away, you know, my painting, 